It's Valentine's Day, which means that people all over the world are celebrating time with their loved ones. Keeping in with the spirit of the holiday, I figured I'd share a romantic story with you from Fallout 4. Now this being Fallout 4, it is going to be a sad story. This is the story of Edwin and Annika. If you travel just south of Vault 81, you find a small lake called the Chestnut Hillock Reservoir. You go here to find the cat in the Vault 81 quest here, kitty kitty. There are two small buildings on the shore of this lake, one of which is larger. If you head to the larger one, you find a whole bunch of blood bugs devouring the corpse of a Brahmin. As soon as they see you, they stop feasting and attack. This can prove tricky at younger levels, but if you're wearing power armor, it's a much easier encounter. Once the bugs are dead, you can explore the small, dilapidated shack. One of the first things we notice is a flickering light coming from the porch. It looks like a power conduit hanging upside down with sparks coming out of it. Enter the house and on the wall you find a circuit breaker. If you flip it, arcs of electricity shoot out from the power conduit, injuring both you and your companion. If only we had known about this sooner, we could have used it against those nasty bugs. The nice thing about this is it is repeatable. Unlike with Tesla traps, you don't have to reset it to fire it again. You can pull on this circuit breaker time and time again to activate the arcs of electricity. But what does this mean? Why is this here? The answer lies on the sole terminal inside the building. This is Edwin's terminal. Inside the terminal we find a holotape labeled Edwin's holotape. This is a journal filled with diary entries from Edwin. The first entry is recent, made on September 7th, 2287. This is the same year that you walked out of Vault 111, not long before you woke up. We learn that on this day, Edwin arrived at this shack with his pet Brahmin named Bess. Already we fear for the worst due to the name of the dead Brahmin that the blood bugs were eating, just outside. Edwin and Bess used to live at this shack years ago. We can assume that raiders scared them away. He comes back and says, the old place is still in one piece, though the north side has sunk in a little more. Damn raiders, he says. They must have pushed Edwin and Bess out, taken over the place, completely trashed it, and then moved on, allowing Edwin and Bess to finally return. He then spent two weeks cleaning it up and turning it into a proper home. By September 12th, Edwin was finally settling in. He says, I forgot how nice it was to get off of the road. Bess seems to be settling in well too. He then reminisces on his past. Ten years ago, he met the love of his life named Annika. They met when she leveled a shotgun at his head. We don't know the rest of the story. Did she used to be a raider? Or maybe he was a raider and he invaded her home only to find her well defended. We don't know, but we do know that the two of them fell in love. Ten years ago in 2277, Annika and Edwin met and fell in love. But where is she now? In the next entry, we learn a bit more about that zapper on the porch. The lake has been a breeding ground for all sorts of bugs. Nasty things, he calls them. He keeps chasing them off, but he needed a more permanent solution. He spent an entire afternoon rigging up that zapper with parts from an old generator. In the next entry, we learn that Annika is dead. Edwin spent the evening sitting underneath the stars, 200 years after the bombs dropped, and he can still see shooting stars in the sky. He and Annika used to enjoy watching the shooting stars together, and he begins to reminisce again. She's been dead for three years. All he has left is her locket and this old shack, which was at one time their home. We don't know how she died, he doesn't tell us, but he does say that she deserved better. On the 17th, Edwin went out fishing. This was too far away from his bug zapper, leaving him vulnerable in the middle of the lake. The bugs came back, he says, bloat flies, and worse, a hell of a swarm. He got a couple of good shots off at the bugs, but in the ruckus, he tipped over and fell into the lake. He had to swim back to the dock. He's not used to this many bugs at his old shack. He says if this keeps up, he's gonna leave first thing in the morning. It's just not worth it. But later that very same day, he comes back to his terminal and he writes his final entry. I can't find the locket, he says. It must have slipped out of my pocket when the boat tipped over. I have to go back. It's all I've got to remember her by. I can't lose it, too. If you walk to the end of the dock, you see an overturned boat lying in the middle of the lake. 
when you swim out to the boat and dive down directly under it, sure enough, we find a skeleton clutching a locket in his hand. The name on the locket is Annika. This is Edwin's corpse. He drowned trying to retrieve the only photo he had left of the woman he loved more than life. After he drowned, there was no one left to care for Bess, and so the bugs got to her too. The water must be highly corrosive, because all we find of Edwin is his skeleton, and yet this did not happen very long ago. Indeed, Bess's corpse still has flesh on it. You find a cooler next to his body and inside a key to the safe inside his house. But as soon as you surface, a swarm of bloat flies attacks, forcing you onto the top of the overturned boat. You have very little room to move on this small boat, and in this situation, vats will come in very handy. The Chestnut Hillock Reservoir is otherwise pretty quiet. At the bottom of the lake, we find a red toolbox and an explosives chest with mines and grenades inside. If you swim up under the boat, you find a cap stash lodged underneath one of the seats. There's some old office equipment like desks, vending machines, and chairs at the very bottom where you'll find some caps and ammunition. The second building on the shore is boarded up. You can't enter it. And over by the docks near Vault 81, we find some skeletons from before the war. These appear to be people who died during the initial atomic blast. We find a woman in a wheelchair, a man fishing, and a man lying in a bathtub holding a Nuka-Cola Quantum and wearing sunglasses. And that is the story of Edwin and Annika at the Chestnut Hillock Reservoir. Edwin was a man who loved the woman who leveled a shotgun at his head. He loved her so much that he risked his life and eventually forfeited his life to retrieve a locket to remember her by. Interestingly, X688 says something puzzling when you reach the overturned boat. That overturned boat. I wonder if that was really an accident. Is he hinting at foul play? How could this be anything other than an accident? Is he suggesting that Edwin tried to commit suicide? That it wasn't the blood bugs that caused him to capsize, but that he tried to kill himself, lost his nerve, went back to the house, discovered the locket was missing, and finally succeeded in killing himself when he went back to retrieve it. Or maybe he's suggesting something a little darker. Maybe it's the ghost of Annika that tipped the boat over. Maybe she needed Edwin with her forever. That's not too far-fetched. The supernatural is a common theme in Fallout 4, and it's a very strange thing for X688 to say. Whatever the cause, we can only hope that Edwin and Annika are somehow together again. What did you think of their story and the story of the Chestnut Hillock Reservoir? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. I produce a new video every single day of the week, so please subscribe for more Fallout 4 content. If you'd like to join the Oxhorn community on Discord, be sure to click on that invitation link in the description below. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad that you're watching this video with me today. Thanks so much for watching from the bottom of my heart, and I'll see you tomorrow morning bright and early with a brand new video.